Call this regularly scheduled meeting of Bridgewater Town Council to order. Uh, are there any additions or deletions? Hearing none, we'll, uh, we'll declare the agenda approved and we'll go down to announcements. Um, maybe I'll just start. I'm I'm sitting in council chambers for those who are watching over our live stream. Uh, I am, however, for the most part alone here. Uh, I'm just with our uh, communications lead um, because it is still... Uh, illegal in Nova Scotia for municipalities to meet in their council chambers. So I wanted the public to know that um, that is why I am alone here. So we've made that request um, a couple of times now. We've made that request to have that change so that we can meet as a team uh, or at least have the option to meet as a team. So hopefully the next time uh, we have a live council meeting uh, in July, at least more of us will be able to be in, in council chambers. But I missed this place, and so <laughs> that's why I'm here today. Uh, are there any announcements from any members of council? No? We've got a, a number of um, grad class of 2020 events um, this week. So if you are a uh, student graduating from Parkview, congratulations. And we know that uh, Wednesday you're getting your diploma and, um, and going to the school I guess for potentially the last time to pick that up. And um, Thursday we have a couple of prom-like events. Uh, I don't know what else to call them, but uh, there's some professional photos being done of grads at the LCLC uh, during the day. Um, and uh, in the evening at nine o'clock, there's the, uh, the grad parade. I don't know what else to call it, uh, where the class of 2020 will um, kind of parade through the parking lot, the LCLC, and just for the public, um, that starts at nine, but um, priority or preference for parking will be given to uh, students, to the family of students, because there is limited parking. Um, and that starts at nine. And thank you to all the volunteers who put on all of the events for our students. And we have on the agenda today um, from uh, from the French school, they had, a, they had a graduation event on Saturday. So you know, congratulations to them as well. And of course, we don't want to forget NSCC students who graduated, uh, especially from the Lunenburg campus. So congratulations to everybody. Uh, next item is the minutes of June 8th. Uh, regular council meeting are there. Any errors or omissions? No? Okay. So uh, we'll declare the minutes approved and we'll go down to correspondence for action. And um, this is from Gina Walsh. Um, a parent at uh, Ecole de Rive Sud for request for funding for a graduation recognition that um, that took place on the weekend. And so what is council's wish for this? Someone prepared to make a motion or someone want to discuss Discuss this topic. No. I think Michael has his hand up. Oh, sorry. Okay, Michael. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, just a comment in the um, in the notes. It says that the um, Department of Education uh, they're unable to access access any of the funds that they had fundraised for the closing event. So they have the money. They just can't access the money. So why do they need money from the town? Yeah. Why can't they just let the Best Western, which is 90% of the of the event, just hold off until they can get paid or get the money out of the schools? Um, so that's a good question. Um, I I didn't understand that either. I know that as, I mean, I can only speak as a, as a parent with student at Parkview that we got some of the um, the money back that we had paid towards uh, towards prom, and so I don't understand why um, this school did not return what I'm assuming is some of the money that they either fundraised or they paid for for this event. Um, 
and then just I should I should back up and just say for those uh, uh, the public watching that um, the request has been made uh, for this event for funding of uh, so what we're suggesting is five hundred dollars to the town of Bridgewater for the students that graduated for this event. The total cost was a thousand dollars. It was at the Best Western. Um, I know Municipality District of Lunenburg gave some already. I don't know if the other two councils are um, giving any. Um, your point is well taken, Councillor Graves. I don't know. I don't know if they negotiated that rate or anything. Deputy Mayor Tanner. I guess the uh, the other issue probably along the same lines is just the uh, proportional amount um, that we're giving or they've asked for compared to the proportional amount we've given to the uh, the large, very large number of Parkview grads. And somehow a, a way to correlate that would make sense to me uh, a little more logically, I guess. Yeah, the cost is. Yeah. Um, We're giving five hundred dollars for nine grads versus fifteen hundred for three hundred. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Thorburn. Yeah, I, I I can make the motion if if you wish. I I think we should support them. We should support the other schools, and they are Bridgewater residents, uh, children that's going to that school. Yeah, so. but you can make the motion, and then we can we can debate the motion once it's on the floor. Sure. Okay, good. I move that Town Council of Town of Bridgewater award a grant in the amount of $500 as per the request contained in document 20-120 to the Ecole de la Rive Sud at the town's contribution towards a graduation ceremony recently held. Thank you. Seconded by? I'll second it. Seconded by Councilor McGuinness. Probably not going to vote for it, but I'll second it. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm struggling with, I struggle with two things. So the first thing that I always struggle with is, um, being asked after the fact. Uh, so this request did come in Friday, um, and it is disproportionate. So it's about, uh, per student, it's about 10 times more. The cost is 10 times per student more than, than the event that's taking place at the LCLC. It's unfortunate that they couldn't combine the two. Um, and I am also, you know, quite concerned to Councillor Gray's point that the school has this money um, that they could have put towards this event, and the parents seem unable to access that that money. Um, and it sounded like they don't even they haven't even been able to talk to somebody in order to find out if eventually they're going to access the money. So does that mean the money's gone? Does it mean it goes towards next year's event? Does it mean in September all the parents are going to get a refund? So there's a whole bunch of questions. Councillor Graves, you have your hand up. You answer the question, or you talk to the question. The flip side of what I <laughs> just said is I don't I don't want these kids to feel like we don't care about their graduation, um, and I. For me personally, I, I mean, I'm going to be supporting the motion, but I feel um, I'm, I'm supporting it out of the principle that these kids deserved something. They did have the event. Again, would it have been nice to, to combine it with the Parkview event to have it at one location with hundreds and hundreds of people watching? I think that would have been really cool, but that ship has sailed. Um, so I don't want I don't want these kids to feel like they're um, second class, if you will. But had this come with a few weeks notice, I probably would have pushed to go after the school and find out where that money is. Deputy Mayor Tanner. Uh, one, I guess, do we know what the municipality gave? And, uh, and two, do we know what will happen if they get access to the funds that they have fundraised? So in my opinion, it, it's it's their money. I, I don't understand the why that's not being released them if they fundraised for it. Yeah, so my understanding is the municipality district of Lunenburg gave, uh, and Tammy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, about $230. Um, but they have two of the students, I believe, are theirs. Yeah, they're, they're actually considering it tomorrow at their council meeting, but that's the recommendation. Correct. Right. Uh, Mayor Mitchell, uh, I don't seem to have something for I could raise my hand, uh, so I'll just speak up. Yep. Uh, who would pay if, if COVID-19 did not happen? Who would pay for the graduation ceremonies of Parkview and this school? So all the students would have paid. Um, they pay for that. They pay into that. 
Really, the school board does not pay for the graduation. No, I don't. I don't know if they pay. Uh, if there's a shortfall, if they pay, I just know as a as a parent, I at the beginning of the year, I paid, <laughs> I paid for a yearbook, the cap and gown, and towards an event. And it yeah. sounds like based on this letter, it's certainly at, for this particular school, they fundraised for this. Councillor Thorburn. Yeah, I, I just feel where we've contributed to one school that had the same circumstances and paid the money up front that we should be fair. And the fair thing to be to assist this school as well. So I will be supporting the motion. Okay, uh, Councillor Frazier. Yeah, um, I find that uh, a little bit torn here with the circumstances and uh, with with the pandemic, it's it's making it difficult. Uh, I do see both sides as as um, you know trying to play fair to both schools, but I, I have difficulty with the proportion amount and that they fundraise. So I, I am struggling with um, you know the what's on the table but um i feel that in the end we should i should feel support for them for for their unique situation and the circumstances that they're in further discussion ready for the question i am ready for the question yes question is being called all those in favor we'll go around councillor mcginnis yay councillor frazier yay councillor thorburn yay Councilor McDonald. Yay. Councilor Graves. No. Deputy Mayor Tanner. Nay. And I am in favor. So the motion has carried. And uh, I think it would be good to know, um, and maybe we can reach out to Ms. Walsh to find out um, if and when that money is returned to those, to or where that money goes after they finally get in contact with the schools. Because I'm just very curious as someone said that's their money um it's disappointing that you can go towards this event or at least get a refund at least as, as a parkview parent i got a refund so okay good discussion thank you uh our next item under reports and recommendations 2020 municipal and uh csap school board elections voting methods um a lot of information in here so uh, the last couple of elections in Bridgewater, we've had uh, the option of e-voting and telephone voting. So when I say e-voting, I just want to make it very clear for the public. It's also the ability to vote by telephone. So um, I know this is a, a greater impact in rural municipalities where not everyone has internet, but we are talking about um, voting by a computer or using a telephone. Um, and if you look at the numbers, we have seen voter turnout increase by having electronic methods. COVID has obviously thrown a wrench into um, voter safety. If there's a second wave in the fall, the province has, at least right now, made it clear that they are moving ahead with the October election. Um, and so they've asked us to figure out a way to make it as safe as possible and proceed with the election in October. And so uh, what's being proposed here is to go strictly with e or telephone voting and i'll just turn it over to the cao to perhaps give a little bit more detail yeah so council council under the election act can set the method of voting and as was indicated in the last two elections council opted to have the advanced polls with e-voting and uh, the advanced polls went all the way up to the end of uh, the close of the polls on ordinary close closing day at time 7 p.m on, on voting day um, and on voting day, you also opted for paper ballots as well. Uh, what's being recommended is that we move to an electronic voting method and telephone voting method for ordinary poll days, as well as the advanced polls. And the rationale for that is that COVID-19 uh, places some uh, restrictions and perhaps difficulties on holding polls and having poll locations within, within the town. Um, a lot of it has to do with the physical distancing requirements, uh, the cleaning protocols that would be in place for having uh, pencils, uh, touching common surfaces, those things. Uh, we'd have to take extra care um, at the poll stations to make sure there were gloves, pencils, um, and uh, cleaning um, methods put in place. 
Uh, we'd also have to have individuals uh, at the stations to make sure physical distancing were adhered to. And of course, there's just the concern about whether or not people would want to come out to a poll station to vote uh, with those types of restrictions and, and um, I guess, concerns that might exist at that time. And it's really, it, it's anyone's guess what October is going to look like. But if there is a second wave, then uh, it could definitely impact turnout at the poll, poll stations. Um, the number of municipalities have gotten together to talk about elections, as they do every time just before election, to uh, go over you know, kind of uh, some tips and uh, suggestions about how we can make the election um, better each time. And there are a number of municipal units that have opted for e-voting and telephone voting only for both the advanced and the ordinary poll. And the reason for that are ordinary voting day. And the reason for that is simply just as we said, it's the, it's the complications that come along with a possible second wave of COVID-19 and the measures that we would have to put in place to accommodate a traditional poll station with paper ballots. Um, I do have the list uh, that we have um, acquired in terms of the towns within Nova Scotia thus far that have um, opted for that, but some of our neighbors have, some of our neighboring towns have done that. Um, and you'll probably see that it'll vary between municipal units. I know some do have concern over internet and the quality of internet, but telephone voting is the other alternative. Uh, it's very easy to do as well and doesn't rely on um, internet strength or signals to do that. So that is the recommendation that's before council tonight. The council supports that, then we would need a motion to that effect. Thank you. Uh, questions from council? As I said, this is not our first go round with e-voting. Catch the Thorburn and see if your hand up. Yes, Tim, when I was reading the document, we're going to be charged $2.45 per resident. And that's for every resident in the town of Bridgewater, whether they vote or not. That seems a little bit expensive to me to uh, click on a ballot to vote. Um. At last election, our costs, uh, uh, Amanda put a comparison there. Uh, to do it the uh, traditional way uh, with both e-voting and paper, we're estimating around 28000 To do it with the e-voting for advanced poll, which we've done, and I would suggest our voters to become accustomed to, and then having the paper uh, and, and doing e-voting on ordinary poll day too, it's actually a little cheaper because you don't have to hire the poll staff. Uh, and supply costs are minimal as well because we're not buying ballots. We're not uh, dealing with food costs and, and all that that goes along with hosting polls. I understand that, but it still seems a little expensive to push a button cost you $2.45. That's yeah. my point. <laughs> that, that was the rate that was uh, negotiated with HRM went out and did a proposal call. And a televote was the, the selected uh, provider. And that was the rate negotiated, and they kind of honored that rate for other municipal units throughout Nova Scotia. So it's, it's the best rate. Would you like a motion, Your Worship? Sure. <laughs> I move the town council of the town of Bridgewater use only electronic voting methods, telephone, and internet for the 2020 municipal and CSAP school board elections. Thank you. Seconded by. Second that. Councilor Graves. Further discussion? Yes, uh, Your Your Worship. Uh, Councillor McGinnis here, is anyone that was sitting around the council table uh, in 2016 when we had this discussion know my feeling on e-voting? And I'm just wondering if a couple of things might have changed. I hope they have. Uh, I want to know how many votes can be made from one computer terminal? Is it one, two, four, five, or six? Last time it was six. Uh, and uh, is there any way other than the use of the ID card to identify who is actually voting. So you're, you're saying uh, last time it was up to six from the same IP address, I think. Um, yes. Yeah, and I don't know about the second part of that. So I don't know. I don't know if that's been changed from six down. I'd have to I'd have to confirm that with Amanda what the details of that are. Um, but each voter is given a unique PIN number. And that, that's provided by IntelliVote. So that's generated through their system. So we yeah. can't tell who votes. Yeah, the, the, the problem is they oh, mail those you? they mail those cards out. And sometimes you don't get to that destination they should. And some you may find in the lobby of apartment buildings. 
And ironically enough, I'm going to vote in support of this motion. I just think that e-voting has too many flaws uh, to uh, to uh, keep from fraud from happening. In many elections, a lot of elections are decided sometimes with less, less than 10 votes. And so they can be easily influenced. And using e-voting, you can do that quite easily. So I only because we've had COVID-19 and we don't have any other alternative, I don't think, uh, I will support the motion. But in general, I am totally against e-voting until it gets more... Uh, more accurate on knowing who, who, if they know who is voting and how many times they're voting. So, my two cents worth this. Thank you. Any further discussion? Question. Questions being called. So I'll go around the room. Um, well, I'll go around your rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor McGinnis? Yay. Councilor Pregier? Yay. Councilor Thorburn? Yay. Councilor McDonald? Yay. Councilor Graves? Yay. Deputy Mayor Tanner? Yay. I am in favor. Motion is carried. And so we'll move from that to um, the first reading of the proposed alternative voting method. So we have to uh, we have to go through a couple of readings of this. I'm just waiting to refresh my screen. Sorry. Okay, um, we've kind of already had the discussion on this, uh, unless there's some questions about the next part. Sure. Would you like me to continue on? Perfect. <laughs> I move the town council for the town of Bridgewater endorse the intent of the proposed alternative voting method bylaw as presented in document 20-019E and proceed to second and final reading of the bylaw at a council meeting to be held on Jan uh, July 13th, 2020 and authorize staff to publish all public notices pursuant to section 168 of the Municipal Government Act. Thank you, seconded by? I'll second it, Your Worship. Councillor Thorburn, thank you. Any further discussion? Question. Question being called. Councillor McGinnis, yay or nay? Yay. Councillor Pajir? Yay. Councillor Thorburn? Yay. Councillor McDonald? Yay. Councillor Graves? Yay. Deputy Mayor Tanner? Yay. And I'm in favor, motion is carried. I feel like I should be looking around the room as if you're mm -hmm. all here, I'll turn your I'll turn your uh, nameplates around. <laughs> next, <time. laughs> uh, next item is the 2020 elections uh, advance and alternative uh, voting dates. So, um, I think the public has figured out by now that there is a municipal election coming up um, on the 17th of October, and there's uh, of course some uh, first day of alternate advance. Uh, voting is October 8th, and then there's uh, people can vote for uh, the 10 days between the 8th and the 17th. That's pretty straightforward. Are there any questions about that? No questions? Someone prepared to make a motion? I'll make a motion. You're Thank welcome. you, Councillor Brazier. Yes. I move that Town Council for the Town of Bridgewater designate October 8, 2020 as the first day of the alternative advanced voting process and allow electronic voting to be available for 10 8 a.m. on October 8, 2020 through to the close of the election at 7 p.m. Atlantic on October 17, 2020. Thank you. Seconded by? I'll second that. Councilor Graves, any discussion? Question. Question being called. Councilor McGinnis? Yay. Councilor Fragier? Yay. Councilor Thorburn? Yay. Councilor McDonald? Yay. Councilor Graves? Yay. Deputy Mayor Tanner? Yay. And I am in favor. That's good. That's enough election stuff for now. <laughs> uh, next item is Bridgewater Tennis Club Designated Community Project Fund Application. Um, so as we know, the Bridgewater Tennis Club made a presentation to council pre-COVID uh, to talk about uh, work they'd like to do to the courts. Um, in order to do that, they need to, or they'd like to be able to issue tax receipts for donations. And, and uh, in order to enable that, they would like the donations to be made to the town. It's very similar to what we do for HP Studios Fieldhouse, where people make donations to the town. We hold that and then we send it back out. Um, in this case, would be to the tennis club. Any questions on that? 
No? Okay, is someone prepared to make a motion? I can do that. Thank you. I move that Town Council for the Town of Bridgewater in accordance with Policy 97 Designated Community Project Fund accept the application submitted by the T Bridgewater Tennis Club as contained in Document 20-109. Thank you. Seconded by? I'll second the motion. From Council Regier. Thank you. Any further discussion? Question. Hearing question being called. Uh, Councilor McGinnis? Yay. Councilor Fugier? Yay. Councilor Thorburn? Yay. Councilor McDonald? Yay. Councilor Graves? Yay. Deputy Mayor Tanner? Yay. And I'm in favor. Thank you. Just trucking right along here. Uh, the next item is the facade improvement program uh, funding for a number of projects, which is great to see. And I'm just trying to talk while my screen loads. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so these came in, uh, so these are being recommended by the downtown, uh, advisory committee. I don't know if they have anything they wish to add our members there to these. All right. If anyone has any questions. Just a comment. Sure. There's about a hundred thousand dollars worth of renovations and, uh, I think $20,000 on our part is a, is a small price to pay to make the town look good. It's a good investment. Agreed. And it's nice to see a lot of things happening on King Street. So as everyone looks at the these addresses, that's each of those addresses is work being done on a property downtown, uh, investment being put back in. Councillor Thorburn, I see you have your hand up. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, although it's not on the motion, but it is in our document, it would be nice to see in the motion the name at that location, whether it's Vogue or whoever it is, so that the people know where the money's being spent, just not a civic number. It's the name of the business. So yes, I'm sure we can do that as long as we uh, we probably have if, to if check we're with, allowed. With, yeah. If we, <laughs> um, yeah. The one problem with that is not necessarily the business; it's the uh, it's the building owner that has made the application yeah and it has been identified in the documents yeah i'm it's just opening up identified in the documents so yeah i'm just I, opening I up the document now we can we can go over those and uh state who the business are sorry my computer is giving me some does I someone have their doc doc if you have the document open does someone want to review who those are i have mine open your worship sure if you just want to list the list those properties. Nine. 511, 513 King Street, formerly occupied Vogue Optical. Uh, 517 King Street, Mr. Surplus. And 581 is uh, Speedy Cash. And 668 right. is Jack's Burgers and Shakes. Jack's Burgers and Shakes, Cummings Fire and Safety Building. Great. So that, that's good for the public to know. So, yeah. yes. So, great. Thanks for sharing that. Other questions about that? Any questions? Would you, like, would, would you like to have a motion, Your Worship? I, I would. Thank you. I move the Town Council of the Town of Bridgewater endorse the recommendation of the Downtown Plan Advisory Committee and approve grants for improvements in accordance with Policy 96 to the following properties in the amount of five thousand dollars each: 668 King Street, uh, 509, 511, and 513 King Street, 517 King Street, and 581 King Street. Thank you. Second and by. I'll second second that. Oh, go ahead. <clears throat> I think I think Deputy Mayor Tanner squeezed in there. <laughs> Further no discussion? Question. All right. Uh, Council McGinnis, yay or nay? Yay. Council Frazier. Yay. Council Thorburn? Yay. Council McDonald? Yay. Council Graves? Yay. Deputy Mayor Tanner? Yay. And I am also in favor. Thank you. Look forward to seeing the work done. Uh, the next item is the building permit report for May of 2020. And um, if you didn't know we were in a pandemic, then one would only have to probably look at the building permit report to see that um, things have slowed down. Um, I think it is important to note, though, that I mean, I think we've all seen the giant crane that's uh, that's in town. So so these would have uh, some of the projects that you see are either in a, a report that's already come to council or um, like it could have been months and months ago that we've seen uh, we've seen the permit report. So uh, when I look at the 2020 numbers, it doesn't mean like I'm just trying to think of that that uh, 
specific project with the crane. I think that came in the in the 2019. Uh, actually, the, per the permit just got issued. Oh, it just that. got issued, so it hasn't even come yeah. yet. Yeah, the development agreement was last last year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So just <laughs> the, the public might look at the report and say, "How can you have a giant crane in, in town, and then your your building permit report is down so much?" So that's that's kind of why. So that's there. Anyone have any questions on the building permit report? Okay. Uh, next one is um, amendments to policies 18, development agreements, and 34 uh, policy 34, public hearing agenda and procedures. So I'm going to turn it over to staff to explain that one a little bit for the public. Sure. Um, these are just some uh, housekeeping amendments. Uh, to So policy 34 is the public hearing and agenda procedures. So that sets out how we hold our public hearings for uh, land use planning matters, development agreements, uh, rezonings, etc. And that was just to update it. It hadn't been updated since 2003. And uh, just to reflect changes to position names, some of the terminology and responsibilities. So um, instead of referring to the developer, we're referring to the applicant because when it's a homeowner and you're calling them a developer, they feel a little uncomfortable and so do we sometimes um, and uh, it's just more reflective of what uh, of who they are and uh, for development agreement policy number 18 that is to add the authority to execute other uh, instruments as required by the development agreement so for example uh, the development agreement may require an easement uh, in favor of the town for services. And so that is so that we do not have to come back to, um, and we haven't, It's it's been implicit in the, um, the motions that council has made to date that uh, by executing the development agreement, you're executing all other instruments associated with that, but it was suggested uh, by our solicitor that we add that line into the motion and then it's very explicit that uh, permission and approval uh, for those other instruments are is provided in that single motion. Okay, any uh, any members of council have questions on that? So it should make things a little easier, <laughs> which is what we want. Uh, someone prepared to make a motion. I'll make a motion. Oh, I think Councilor McDonald was first. <laughs> I move the town council for the town of Bridgewater give notice pursuant to section 48 of the Municipal Government Act that at the at the July 13th, 2020 council meeting, amendments to policies 18 development agreements and 34 public hearing agenda and procedures under the Municipal Government Act will be considered. Thank you, seconded by. I'll second the motion. Councilor Frigier, thank you. Further discussion? Hearing, hearing none, Councilor McGinnis. Uh, you got to unmute there. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Councilor Fajir. Yay. Councilor Thorburn. Yay. Councilor McDonald. Yay. Councilor Graves. Yay. Deputy Mayor Tanner. Yay. And I'm in favor. Thank you. That's great. Next item is uh, recommendation of the Bridgewater Board of Police Commissioners citizen reappointment. Um, so this is to reappoint uh, Commissioner Virginia Oikel to the uh, back to the police board for her third term, which ends October 31st, 2022. And uh, she has been um, a real asset on that committee for uh, her time on that uh, on that board. So we certainly want to keep her on there until the end of her term. Are there I'll any questions? Motion. Yes, I'll make that motion. Certainly. Okay. I would move that town council of town of Bridgewater endorse the recommendation of the Bridgewater Board of Police Commissioners and reappoint Virginia Eichel to the Bridgewater Police Board of Police Commissioners for a third term ending October 31st, 2022. Thank you. Seconded by? Seconded. Uh, Councillor McGinnis. Uh, any discussion? Hearing Question. none. Councillor McGinnis? Yay. Councillor Fragier? Yay. Councillor Thorburn? Yay. Councillor McDonald? Yay. Councilor Graves, mm -hmm. Deputy Mayor Tanner, Yay. and I am also in favor. Thank you. And we'll let her know. Or we'll let uh, we'll let the uh, chair, um, uh, Commissioner Walker, know. Uh, next item is Tender 20-01E Wastewater Treatment Plant Digester Building Roof Replacement. 
Um, so this is just a work in progress, <laughs> this building. Um, I think, I, Tammy, did you want to speak to this um, just yeah, as uh, the tender came in? Yeah, sure. Audrey, I, I see her here as well. Um, so maybe it, may, it might be it might be useful to have Audrey just kind of speak to the results of the tender. Um, it is over budget, uh, but my understanding is, is that we put some very expensive equipment in there and did some upgrades within that plant and to not address the fact that the roof is uh, leaky could compromise the equipment. So there'd have to be money spent on an interim solution if we decided not to award and and, uh, and deal with it in the next year's budget. So the recommendation is that we do proceed, but Audrey can review the report and the results of, of the tenders. Sure, Audrey, if you just wanna run us through that pretty quick. Yep, so we did issue it. We did, did get a lot of interest. A lot of bidders came uh, to, to see the site. Uh, we did get five submissions and uh, our budget was 75000 and the lowest bid of the five submissions was $101,261 net HST. We think a lot of it is due to COVID. There's a significant amount of construction work going on and uh, most of the bidders are tied up well into the fall. So that's why you're seeing such high bids. So we wouldn't expect to see much better than that this season unless we went really late. Questions from council? Councilor Graves? Your microphone's muted. Yeah, sorry, just in regards to the bids, three of them are really high and then two of them are really low. And I'm just wondering if, if they understand the work involved, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I understand Kirk did check with the two low bidders. They are well versed in what happened and both very reputable companies, but the three that you see that are really high are tied up even later than the fall. So the only reason they put it in was they would have to get other help to get it done. Okay, okay, great, thank you. Councillor Thorburn. Yeah, that was my question. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times if, if you don't really need the work, you'll put a high price in and if they take yeah. it, uh, you get it. So yeah. uh, I'm surprised, but I think that's a sign of the future. Probably all of our tenders could go up by 15 to 20% uh, because that's the way it is. And it's something we also saw after um, the 2008-2009 economic crisis was uh, when stimulus funding was placed into the economy to kickstart the economy, um, the price of tenders went up because a lot of companies knew they could access federal money for projects and there was a lot of work to go around. So they drove the price up. So it wouldn't surprise me if we're, we're in this for some time. Further like questions? Here, Mitchell? Yes, please. Uh, I move the town council for the town of Bridgewater and endorse the recommendation of staff and award tender 20-01E wastewater treatment plant digester building roof replacement to two to three two nine six one five one Nova Scotia Limited Metro Roofing for a total price of one hundred and one thousand six hundred sixty four dollars, including HST one hundred one thousand two hundred sixty one dollars and seventy one cents net HST. Thank you. Second by. I'll second that, Your Worship. Councillor Thorburn, further discussion? Question. Question being called. Uh, Councillor McGuinness? Yay. Councillor Pajir? Yay. Councillor Thorburn? Yay. Councillor McDonald? Yay. Councillor Graves? Yay. Deputy Mayor Tanner? Yay. And I am also in favor. Thank you. Motion is carried. We'll go to the next item, which is uh, the RFP 2020 02 supply and delivery of flow monitoring equipment. And this probably sounds like something Audrey's going <laughs> to guide us through as well. Okay, so this is the flow monitoring equipment for our inflow infiltration project. It is a total of seven flow loggers. We had an original budget of 150000 We did get a lot of interest, but we actually only had two official proposals, and only one of those actually qualified to be the type of flow logger that we wish to have. Um, so we are looking at a 
budget price of uh, $124,772.06 net HST. That gets us flow loggers that we will put throughout town. We'll use it to basically guide us through our flow monitoring and uh, we can get those installed basically in the next couple of weeks and they'll be in for our fall storms and be able to capture even the dry weather for us. Excellent. Yeah. Wow. Great. Uh, questions from anyone on council? Is someone prepared to give us a motion? I will, Your Worship. Thank you. I would move that Town Council of Town of Bridgewater endorse the recommendation of staff and award IRFP 20-02 supply and delivery of flow monitoring equipment to Biomax Environmental the cost of $137,590.60, including HST, 124,772.06 net HST. Thank you. Seconded by? I'll second that. Councilor Graves, thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing, hearing none. Uh, Councilor McGinnis? Yay. Councilor Fajir? Yay. Councilor Thorburn? Yay. Councilor McDonald? Yay. Councilor Graves? Yay. Deputy Mayor Tanner? Yay. <clears throat> and also in favor, so motion is carried. Thank you. Next item is North Parkade Improvements in Downtown Parking Study. Um, okay, I think I'm going <laughs> to, I think uh, we're going to turn this over to Matt to run us through some of this, or, or Tammy. You both get to tag team on this one. Yeah, Matt will go oh, first. first. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I always speak maybe too much. Hopefully uh, you've had a chance to read the port and the details within, uh, and I'll quickly go over it. Um, so I know that the last time we spoke about this formally was back in March 16th uh, with my last memo. And the, I guess, the understanding there that they wanted staff to go, we wanted staff to go back and look at the life expect, expectancy of the steel structure. Uh, before council would make any kind of investment into the project. Uh, I think through the budgeting process, it was kind of an update was given informally, uh, but just in the second paragraph, uh, we did contact uh, the consultant who did the last assessment and uh, they did report that the steel structure under the concrete deck is in fairly good condition and would estimate the life expectancy after replacing the, the concrete deck in year 10 would be another 25 years. Uh, there's always, always caveats, uh, but he did say that the, we would need to complete the recommended maintenance and inspections, uh, paying particular attention to the columns that were located close to the water. Uh, all of that we would have or have budgeted for uh, in future uh, operational budgets to do. Uh, understanding that council approved the budget in uh, on April 27th. Uh, however, council asked kind of have a second look at most of the projects uh, prior to starting them, just in case, um, what, because of the, the financial circumstances around COVID. Um, so, and I know that uh, we've been doing that through capital reports, uh, and I believe in, in May and June, uh, the North Parkade and the downtown parking study, which was added um, through the budgeting process, have come up, uh, and staff have noted some concern with doing those projects because they are intertwined, along with uh, phase three of the downtown improvements. Um, so I, I guess to, to keep it short and simple, staff have given their opinion um, in terms of that prior to completing any repairs uh, to the North Parkade, um, as well as the phase three of the downtown plan, that we determine that the Parkade is integral to the, down, to the success of the downtown. Uh, so we, we envision that the, a needs assessment of the Parkade would be one of the main objectives of the downtown parking study. Further to that, uh, that the parking study that is uh, planning um, planned for this year would be very challenging under the current circumstances uh, around the health crisis and the socio-economic impacts uh, that could possibly fell for months or, or years uh, based on what the news has said. So we're, staff are a little concerned about the validity of any recommendations, uh, understanding that assumptions are made when reports are done, um, but given the circumstances, maybe too many assumptions would be done. Um, especially with the high vacancy of the downtown, although he did talk about the facade program, which is great. Uh, so hopefully that does help. Uh, so staff would make the suggestion or recommendation that we hold off in the parking study uh, until next fiscal year. And then the improvements to the North Parkade or its demolition uh, that would be scheduled for following years uh, in order earlier than 22-23. 
I do note I kind of just cut and paste the last my last memo in case it comes up uh, under financial implications. There is the projects listed from the approved capital project uh, capital budget uh, there for 2021, which is the railing improvements as well as the aesthetic improvements that were planned this year, uh, and then the parking study which was planned this year or which was an addition, and then in 20 uh, and then we have the phase three streetscape um, improvements as well. Uh, would be scheduled uh, to be completed in 2021 and 2022. Um, the I also listed or repeated uh, what the investment which would uh, have have to happen in the sub next 10 years uh, just with operate with the annual maintenance program. Uh, so a lot of it is 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 repeats. So for a number of years we'll go through ten thousand dollars a year for modern maintenance. Then we do an assessment and some more repairs in 2024. Then another three years of ten thousand dollars per year for modern maintenance. And then 2029 uh, we would do the deck repairs. Uh, although we did note that in 2029 the deck concrete deck would be replaced. Uh, that could be either that year in, in, in replace of or in lieu of the 35,000 or be completed the following year in 2030. Um, and then we did note if they those above cost don't reflect any aesthetic improvements, uh, especially the membrane that would, would go on. So you'd have to add $50,000 per, per year. And I did give some reasoning behind that of, of paying a higher premium uh, for patchwork. It's the best staff could do at this time. I believe that covers the highlights. Your turn, Tammy. <laughs> so um, I think one of the main questions for council is, is if, if we do the uh, parking study and it comes back uh, and indicates that there's no demand or need for the parking spaces that are in the parquet that we could do without, and understanding that it, in the next 10 years after this investment of uh, which are aesthetic investments really the um, the railing and the electrical of 110 and the aesthetic improvements of 190,000 on the deck and then after that it's a small amount each year would you would you if the parking study came back be looking to demolish the parkade and if you wouldn't then you may want to consider looking at those those improvements uh, it's, it's really a question of how much that parking study would influence your direction with that parkade over the next um, 10 years. Questions from council? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, the, <laughs> I laughed too, <laughs> at that little <laughs> nervous, not kind of awkward laugh. Um, for me, I, when I look at this and, and uh, I look at the, the impact of COVID has impacted the businesses downtown, the changing landscape uh, of retail just in the world, um, which I actually believe will shift back in a positive way to local business. Um, I had an interesting conversation with a couple of local merchants uh, last week who said they now have some sales, like they're doing Christmas level sales. Because people are, they're shopping local now. They're returning to the stores. Now there's been a, it's been a long time since they've been able to be in stores, but they're returning to stores and they're spending money. And I think a lot of it is, you know, local businesses treat their employees well, and they're they employ people in our community, so they want to they want to keep that money local. And I think the other thing for me in terms of the parking study is, as was noted, we just approved a whole bunch of money for a facade program going into buildings that are going to add you know, dozens of people living, literally living on King Street, plus the businesses that are going to go into the main floors of these. We've got um, uh, the old Rofi building that is you know, close to completion that we know is, is offices, so you're going to require parking for offices and, and so on. And that if you did the study today, um, it would say that you don't have a great deal of need for this. And if we made a decision, for me, if I made a decision based on a report that came out in the next couple of months, based on information they collect today in downtown Bridgewater, it's not reflective of 2021 in downtown Bridgewater or 2022. So that's just my my two cents. Councilor Thurman, I see you have your hand up. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, I think we're going to continue to do the maintenance. I heard Tammy say of, of ten to $15,000 a year. So that's going to get done anyway. 
And I, I do believe that, uh, based on the last study that I can remember, that we will need that parking there. So uh, I don't think that we'll see that gone, personally, uh, with the growth that we have down there, with the, especially with the Black Seal development that's coming down there. And, uh, and I think we should go forward, even with uh, doing the cosmetic work this year, because it's the longer we wait, the more it's going to cost. And it's in this year's budget to do it. So I would support a motion to get it done. My two cents worth. Thank you, Councillor Thurburn. Further discussion? Councillor Graves has his hand up, and then Councillor McGinnis. I agree with Wayne. I can't see the um, the parkade ever not being needed. Uh, I, I think it's just too valuable. And, and, you know, I was looking at it last week, and it was pretty full. I forget what day it was, but I was certainly going to send comment to to the rest of the council just to, just to say, if you're in the area, drive by that parkade. It was probably 40% full which is, you know, pretty good, I think, for, for this time of, time of year and, you know, under the circumstances. I think we should get the work done. Councillor McGuinness. Yeah, I tend to agree. I'm not going to repeat what Councillor Gray's and Thorburn just uh, indicated because they're my thoughts exactly. If you hope to revive downtown, you're going to need an abundance of parking. Uh, and so I, and with all the new work that is being done down there, I think that's going to attract some more businesses on the ground floor of those buildings, so I, uh, I, I think we should go ahead. Uh, I would, I, I would be very, very reluctant to uh, move in the direction of eliminating that parkade at this time. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Other uh, thoughts, Deputy Mayor Tanner? Sorry, so I'm a little confused. So, what are we going to spend this year? So, the capital budget has. In the in the budget, um, the electrical and cedar railing improvements for 110,000. Right. And that's going to have a 40 amp, five 40 amp plugs and replace the existing railing, wooden railing system. And then the aesthetic improvements to the deck that were requested, and that was 190,000. And uh, then then every year we'd have maintenance on top of that, which is noted there um, in the report as well. So, but this year it was the 110 and the 190, so 300. So, so yeah, so uh, I, I get that, I guess. Does it make sense to do any of the, uh, the plug replacement given that we literally will have no events until spring of 2021, which is, I think, the purpose of the plugs? So you mean put it into next year's mm -hmm. budget? Yeah, I mean, I guess you you're going to do it next year probably anyway, but I guess, you know, if we want yeah. to save a few bucks this year, I don't know if that makes sense or not. But. Yeah, that, that project was, the reason it's in this year's budget is because it was originally planned for last year, and remember we were over budget, so we just yeah. pushed it off. So it, you could, you don't have to do it this year, you could move sure. the railing and okay. the electrical out of here. Councilor Vergier. Yes, I just think it makes sense to have the parking study done first before we spent significant dollars. I agree with the regular maintenance part of it, but just as far as doing any additional repairs, I think the parking study should come first, in my view. Thank you. Councillor Thurburn? Yeah, I just feel if we hold off that electrical for another year, it's just going to increase the price that much more. We're going to be working on it now, doing the other, uh, replacing the boards and whatnot. We might as well get the job done, and then it's behind us. Um, and, and we know what it is, so it's just my view. Fair point. Your, your Worship, uh, Councilor McGinnis here, uh, the parking study, uh, yes. is that going to take into consideration that if you did uh, do, uh, take down the parkade, would there be street parking available on that side? So that's a good question. It, would, you, re it would require it to take into account that removal of any parking might necessitate the need for some yeah. parking. And I'm not too sure, Matt, what's what's left of that, uh, of the, I guess, bank or side that you could put parking on when you take the parkade off. Like how much is on land and how much is suspended right now uh, yeah uh can you hear me okay just to make yep. sure 
Yep. Okay, good. Thanks. Uh, while I haven't had the experience uh, or the involvement in the previous parking studies, certainly I would think that uh, there would be an analysis, analysis done to determine how many parking spots we need, what we have existing, uh, minus the parkade and where where those ones would need to be make, made up, so to speak. I do, I believe, in the last parking study, they had noted uh, I guess less than 50 percent, uh, we'll say, for the uh, the, the parakeet, parkade that was torn down, and they're averaging around two thirds, I think, or 75 uh, percent uh, for the uh, for the north parkade. So I believe that there was uh, the requirement for the parkade, but uh, with the, the landscape as it is, the need for on-street parking or the availability um, that would be part of it. That would be looked at. Thank you, Councillor McDonald. Uh, I'm just the, on the electrical. I'd like to see it done this season. That way, we're not doing it during. Oops, sorry. During uh, the event season next year, it'll be done before we're trying to hold events, and things won't be kind of in process during some of the the events. Hopefully, that we're having next year. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Thorburn. Yes, I I just feel if we want to get rid of a parking lot, I mentioned it before about the O'Neill parking lot. That's costing us a fair amount of money each year, so. We really, if we want to look at eliminating one, that would be a good choice to eliminate. But certainly not the North Parkade. We need it. So to me, that's that's her, where I feel the parking study is going to going to highlight things for us. Is um, I, I guess in my head, the last parking study showed that if you removed the South Parkade, you still needed the North Parkade. Yeah. And I don't think a lot has changed. Yes, we've had a few businesses move off of King Street, but as we've also seen in the last 12 months, maybe the last 18 months, we've had uh, a lot of those buildings change hands. Um, if you walk down the street from Dufferin all the way to Victoria Road, um, you've got new businesses or you have businesses that just, or buildings rather, that just changed hands. Um, I'm trying to think of Right, you've got the Bank of Montreal building. We just finished the um, passing that through council. Um, you've got 517, which is uh, the old classics that's got work being done to it right now. Facade program just came in for the old Vogue. You've got the Rofi building and Gauss Furniture both being worked on right now. Um, and you've got uh, expansion at uh, Frankenstein. Jack's just put in for facade. And then you've got the old tavern, which also just changed hands. Um, so to me, it was the parking study, I think, is, is I can't imagine it's going to say the parkade can come down. I think if anything, it's going to say you need maybe some additional parking or don't get rid of the O'Neill lot or, or something. Um, so I guess the question for council is to show to Councillor Fajir's point, if you if you're confident that that parkade can't be removed, then you can probably confidently go ahead and put money into it. But if you if you worry that the parking study is going to say the first thing that should go is the parkade, then I think you're 100 percent right. You shouldn't be putting any money into the parkade. And I think I've heard both sides. For me, I'm confident that it's not going to be take down the parkade. It's going to be do this with the O'Neill lot or something else. That's my two cents. Uh, Deputy Mayor Tanner, you had your hand up first. So um, fortunately, I'm still slightly confused. I know it's easy for me to be slightly confused, but uh, the motion seems to indicate we're going with option three or suggest option three, but option three, uh, the way it's worded at least, seems to be we're not spending any money. You would be doing a traffic study um, and next year and construction, I believe, uh, the year after that. So, sorry, the parking study in 21-22. Yeah. Next year. Yeah, and then the improvements would be in 22-23. So, so, the, so I, just so I'm clear, mm -hmm. the, uh, the electrical and cedar railing and aesthetic improvements would not be done this fiscal. They would be done in 22-23 if, if you were to accept the recommendation in the report. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, I, I, I guess if I'm un, I'm a, a little unclear. I'm clear now, but I'm wondering if everybody else is clear in what we're the motion, what the motion is suggesting. 
Yeah, I'm clear what it's suggesting, but I'm I'm prepared to change that so that oh, okay. let's get done this year. Uh, based on what we've discussed, we've taken place, and I can change that motion to reflect what we're all talking about. If that's the mayor's wish. Uh, Councilor Brazier, I think she had her hand up. Next. Yeah, mine was similar to uh, Deputy Mayor Tanner's question. It was clarity around the motion and the timing of the repair, so it did get it answered. So it, it comes back to which is the cart and which is the horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, if I may, you have a very significant, probably the largest financial institution in the town of Bridgewater on King Street that relies upon that parking. Yeah. I'd be really reluctant to remove that parking. Um, I think, and, and for me, if I look ahead 10 years, I'm probably more inclined to make a decision before the next batch of a like millions has to go into this parkade. We just, we literally just spent a boatload of money bringing this this parkade up to uh, a level that we could put people on it. If you, it wasn't that long ago where you couldn't have people on the parkade um, for events. I should clarify that for events, um, and so I. I can't imagine, again, I'm just speaking for myself, I can't imagine um, in the next 10 years removing it, but I can imagine in 10 years having a conversation of, you know, more people are walking, active transportation is a bigger part, people are biking everywhere, we don't need anywhere near the parking because it's been a shift in mindset. But for me, it's I think right now, we just spend a lot of money, I, I, and it looks... Horrible. <laughs> well, Do the work this year. Yeah, your your worship. Uh, I I guess I'm okay with doing the park in the study next year. I don't have a problem with it, but I can word that motion to reflect the intent of doing the rest of the repairs this year, if that's what you wish. Uh, I think we'd still need to kind of maybe have a little bit more of the discussion before. Um, Go for it. Uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Tanner's got his hands up. I I'm just want to be 100% clear. So it's about a $300,000 investment uh, if we do what what some are suggesting uh, for repairs and so on. Um, and based on bids coming back, it's probably going to be a bit more than that. I assume, be, you know, if we think about the way uh, bids have been trending, it might be 320 perhaps. So we're, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it could it could be. Cost prohibitive, Council for sure. Um, yeah, similar to that. I, I know all our uh, quotes have a contingency built into them. And is it is it ten percent, fifteen percent? Just concerned for we don't want to be in the same predicament as last year with with the overage and not being able to fulfill projects of the. North Parquet because they were over budget. So I just concerned a bit about the estimates and not going over. No, very, very fair question. Councillor Graves? Yeah, I, as I said earlier, I can't imagine us not needing the uh, the North Parquet at all. Uh, also, if, if it is a budgeted item uh, and if the, if the cost is too high, then you just you know postpone it till next year. But let's get it out there and see see what the market says. Yeah, so that's the other piece of this to remember is is if council wants to move ahead with the work this year, it doesn't mean that the work gets approved. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it has to go out for tender and it would have to come back. And if it came back and it was not something that was palatable for us, then then we would be able, if it's over budget, um, then we don't have to accept it. Exactly. Councilor Thurburn. Yes, Your Worship. The, the, the project that we're talking about was in the budget, was approved by council. So we're just trying to give some direction to proceed or not proceed. So uh, no, we've, already, everyone... we've, we've already approved that amount in the budget. Yeah, I think the, the intent of the direction from council was to uh, previously, previously was to do the parking study uh, prior to a decision on that. So um, as long as it's clear that you're happy to proceed without the parking study, then then staff can do that. Okay, Councillor Pajir. 
Uh, just curious what staff's opinion would be with us in timing and putting uh, the tender out. Are we um, knowing that a lot of contractors are busy? Just wondering uh, just their opinion as to whether they feel that we're, we're going to be successful in uh, getting it done this year um, or into the fall. Just, just wanted staff's opinion on that. I think we staff would be successful um, in the, I think the uh, the electrical and cedar railing improvements is probably more straightforward of the two projects. Uh, the aesthetic improvements um, with the deck repairs and restoration, uh, that is a, we'll say a two-parter, a uh, two-phase project. You need to fix the deck first um, and we would need to get that out, then the, uh, then the coating on it. Uh, so I, I would certainly have some concern over the aesthetic improvements, uh, but I'm very conservative by nature. So um, that would be my opinion on that matter. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Tanner. Uh, just a quick question for Matt, perhaps. Are, are these going to be two separate tenders or one all-inclusive tender? Uh, we we haven't had that discussion in house uh, yet, but I would suspect that those, because of the variety of work, uh, that we'd have them separate. Uh, in my experience, lumping them all together uh, means a general and increased fees. Uh, so you try to uh, hire um, or, or individually tender it uh, for specialities. Okay. Councillor Graves. So another question for Matt. With the expertise we have for electrical in the town of Bridgewater, is it possible to do that in-house, the electrical component? Uh, <laughs> I'll get more questions than I'm used to. Um, I, I would have to speak with uh, Graham and, and Kirk and, and Andrew on that as well as Larry to see if we can do that. I know that there might have already been discussions on that one, but that would have to be confirmed. And I would say um, that uh, certainly if we had the expertise and the, and the uh, I guess, the resource, uh, human resources there to do that uh, and do it within budget or under, we would, staff would certainly make that recommendation. Um, but I'd have to speak to with Larry more on that one. Okay, thank you. Um, I almost forgot my question. Uh, so how do we protect ourselves from a, a tender that we're going to award for this, potentially award for this project, that then halfway through the project they say it's going to be $75,000 over budget? Is this a project that is an ideal candidate for, um, like, this is the price, some kind of penalty clause for either going over time or going over budget, something like that? I don't know who I'm asking, <laughs> Tammy or, or Matt. I don't know if the, if the price warrants a penalty clause simply because you're going to pay more for that if they're over for time, right? Given given the amount, especially if we separate them out and do 110,000 for uh, railings. Um, and, and maybe then, it's not that complex, it, so it's it's yeah. something that you know it's X number of pieces of lumber times X number of hours to install yes. it. But you know what I mean? I'd hate to. You award it. I'm tired of awarding things. And they say, this is the price. Great job. And then halfway through the job, they say, it's now going to be twice as much. Yeah. I, well, I know, Matt, Matt, when you got the, the cost for doing the decking, uh, the aesthetic decking stuff, that was based on research that was done, that Justin had done talking to um, a company. Uh, now, how much has COVID-19 um, affected that? We don't know. Um, and the railings were based on our experience last year with tenders, and again, we, we'll know when the tender price comes in, but they usually do a unit costing, and any change orders require approval. Um, they're small like, projects. I don't know if they'd come in double that amount. They might. Like, we'd build a contingency into the budget, but uh, if there's, do you anticipate that there would be unforeseen with this type of project, Matt, that you wouldn't know up front? I yeah, Mike's still on. Um, again, coming back to just uh, based on my experience, uh, the electrical and cedar railings is it, it, it. I think we all would be comfortable in understanding what uh, 40, the the five plugs needed in the the wooden railing. Uh, so it isn't a project that I would see as a lot of unforeseen, unless you know we we want to look at uh, a number of options uh, for and how we're you know uh, for the cedar railing. Uh, the aesthetic improvements, uh, again, I keep coming back to is uh, that's all subject to, you know, the, the condition of the deck and how much you have to tear out. So if you're paying per 
uh, square foot and they have to remove more than uh, than what da staff anticipated or estimated in the the 84,000 um, that's probably where I would see the cost go up in terms of the the coating it is something fairly uh, new to, to Bridgewater um, so you're probably you're not getting a local company to do that um, you're probably getting somebody from Halifax or beyond. So you, to come here um, to do that work, there, there could be an increased cost for that. And um, I guess the, the saving grace is that we do have a budget number. Uh, so if it was, uh, we'll find out hopefully early on in the tendering process um, with if we're on budget or anywhere near it, um, because there would be, you know, there would be, you know, the standard 10% inside of that budget you would expect to, you know, uh, fluctuate. And I think that it probably answers your question there, Council Fragier, about the contingency, that 10% that's in there. <clears throat> Other questions? I'll get you to re uh, refresh your e-scribe too. There's a, a second motion below there as an option. <clears throat> Not an easy, uh, <laughs> this parkade is never easy for us. Um, what is council's wish? Is someone prepared to make a motion? Do you need more information? Other questions? I'll, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to fly, but we'll see. Okay. <laughs> uh, I move that town council for the town of Bridgewater endorse the recommendation of staff and proceed with option three in document 20-117 and complete the parking study next fiscal year 2021-22 and complete any required North Parkade improvements in subsequent fiscal years 2022-2023 at the earliest. Do we have a seconder? Is anyone prepared to second that? <laughs> <clears throat> I'll ask one more time if anyone's prepared to second that motion. No. Okay. Is anyone else prepared to make a motion? Or do we need more information or more time? Uh, Councilor Thurman, you were... Okay, sorry. Councilor Graves? I move the town council of the town of Bridgewater proceed with the North Parkade improvements in 2020, 2021 and complete the parking survey next next fiscal year. Do we have a seconder? I'll second that motion, Your Worship. Thurburn, thank you. Further discussion? Hearing Question. none, questions being called. Councilor McGinnis, you hear nay? Yay. Sorry, was that yay? Yes, it was, yay. Okay, sorry. Councilor Fragier? Yay. Councillor Thorburn? Yay. Councillor McDonald? Yay. Councillor Graves? Yay. Deputy Mayor Tanner? Nay. And I am in favor. So motion is carried. So we'll do the improvements this year, uh, the parking, the overall parking study next year. And this will come, this will go out to tender and come back. And so council will have the opportunity to review it. And if it's uh, not palatable due to being outside of the budget amount, then we can make that decision when it comes back. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, our next uh, item is co-application to FCM and with Clean Foundation for the PACE program improvement. And I see Greg's been waiting patiently uh, on the online with us, so I'll turn that over to staff. Great. Good evening, folks. Um, I hope this one's a little bit easier than the last one, but uh, it's to be seen. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to provide a quick overview of the the FCM Green Municipal Fund um, opportunity at hand, which which we made a recommendation for, and then have it uh, handed over to to Tammy for some additional comments. Um, so so I guess just kicking things off a little bit of, of background of of how Pace has been used and where we see its its place for the Energized Bridgewater project going forward. Um, so PACE financing has been used since 2015 and, and staff does believe that the financing, PACE financing is an accessible financing solution for property owners. However, there, the town's current PACE program does have some deficiencies which really prevents it from adequately scaling to 
to support both our community energy investment plan as well as our energy poverty reduction program, you know, Energize Bridgewater at large. Um, and these deficiencies were outlined in a council report um, in 2019 last year. Um, so uh, FCM did recently put out three calls for proposal. The first one due, um, there was an extension. It was originally due the end of June. And now it is July 14th. Um, subsequent one due the end of September. And finally, another one due in in uh, sometime in, in winter. Um, no date has been selected yet. Um, so the, the town does believe that we're eligible for the first two calls for funding. Uh, the first, which we would use to resolve known program deficiencies, and the second to pilot pace for a broader range of archetypes, like uh, multi-unit residential buildings. Um, staff did reference pace in the town smart cities application to Infrastructure Canada, um, but it was not included as a line item per se in the economic model that we pitched to Infrastructure Canada, although low interest financing was and is required to capitalize our home energy management system uh, and staff always conceived PACE to be a suitable fit for that low interest mechanism um, that would be paired with other supporting layers of funding and financing as a means to present turnkey value propositions to homeowners. Um, so the new funding opportunity resolves known deficiencies and makes PACE more attractive for homeowners entering the energy poverty reduction program uh, and the broader community. Um, through the grant portion of the funds. So there's a loan portion and a grant portion of, of up to 50% of the loan portion. Um, so the grant portion can be used to, to improve uptake and incentivize deeper retrofits um, through subsidized capital costs, uh, waived administration fees, improved marketing. Um, there is also the introduction, a required uh, introduction of a loan loss reserve fund. So FCM is requiring that you build that into your application. Um, but that's, that, that allows us to further de-risk the investment. So not only is there a lien on the property, uh, there's also a loan loss reserve fund as well if, if payments default. Um, in addition, the loan loss reserve fund can be held in an interest earning account. Um, you know, and that, that interest earned on the account could potentially be used to cover uh, early repayments that, that the town would otherwise be on the hook for. So there's, there's that as a benefit as well. Um, and we anticipated that it will resolve our debt service coverage ratio concerns, although, you know, we are waiting for municipal affairs to confirm this. Uh, there is a meeting tentatively booked for 3 p.m. tomorrow um, with municipal affairs and Department of Energy. Uh, to hopefully finally figure out um, the debt service coverage ratio concerns that 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 essentially need to be addressed before before we we um, pull the trigger on on this application, as well as short term borrowing implications um, that may arise from um, from this recapitalized stream of of pace financing. Um, so so you know staff discussed and explored. So there's still some some you know things that need to be flushed out, um, but we we intend to do that before submitting the application, and that's why there's kind of a caveat to the staff recommendation. Um, in regards to co-applying with Clean, uh, staff did discuss and explore opportunities to co-submit an application with other partners, um, but suggest that Clean Foundation is the preferred choice due to. Uh, a number of reasons that's captured in in the um, uh, in the reports, including capacity, expertise, it builds off you know uh, marketing collaboration efforts, etc. Um, now there are a couple of risks also identified there. Um, I guess the biggest one being we still need to. I guess this four year funding from FCM does not line up with our contract with Clean. Um, our contract with Clean expires in September 30th, 2022. Um, so we would need to amend and extend extend that contract, and and that's also one of the options um, in 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 the staff report to council. Um, yeah, so that's all I have to say about it. Uh, happy to answer any questions and and hand it off to Tammy. I think um, you would want to make some additional comments, Tammy. Thanks, Greg. Okay. All right. So um, understanding that there is a, a deadline or a timeline for which we have to have the application in by, which I think is July 14th. And as Greg mentioned, there are a few few things that need to be determined. But one one that's perhaps of significance to the town is uh, the impact of borrowing for pace. So when we provide a loan to the ratepayer, 
through the PACE bylaw, we borrow for that. Um, now, we can borrow from reserves for a small amount and then pay that back, but uh, we're talking about 130 homes a year, so we're talking 1.3 million. Uh, so this FCM money would be a loan, and it would run through the Municipal Finance Court. So what that means is that the way it's set up right now is that that would impact our debt service ratio. And that would take from capacity from projects that we have on the go. Now, um, your debt service ratio is based on tax revenue and a certain percentage of that. So that as your tax base grows, your ratio gets better, assuming your debt doesn't increase. Um, so there, there might be a little bit of movement in there, but the one that's really of concern at this point, at least to staff, is the operating and debt ratio as well. So the Municipal Government Act states that we can borrow up to 50% of our tax revenue in any given year. So I, I call that short-term borrowing. And we do that to fund projects until they're completed, and then we lock in long-term borrowing. And we just committed to uh, some significant capital to do with our business park improvements in, in the interchange area and um, to ex look at expansion to our park. And so in the next two years, we're going to be looking at 8.4, so 4.2 million a year, plus our sewer projects. So if we do a $2.5 million sewer project, we're short-term borrowing for some of that until it's finished, and then we lock that in. So when Kim, Kim looked at this, um, and I believe she talked to Greg about it too, so he's aware of this as well, there was some concern that we could be reaching the, the, the max on our, our, our short-term or, or operating, I guess, debt in any given year for the next couple of years anyway, as we do some of these big projects. And, and this program could take up some of that space that we need because it is boring that we have to do. So Leon's met with a, a panel of, of, of MLAs or ministers, uh, and he's met with the municipal affairs staff, uh, other staff, Jessica, um, We've had discussions with it as well. I think the mayor also talked to our MLA about it. Um, and we indicated to municipal affairs that when you have a guaranteed source to be coming in behind it to pay that debt, which is the lien on the property, that it shouldn't necessarily impact your debt service ratio. The same as debt would be for something else like a sewer plant or a road improvement or something like that. Uh, and they know the concern and they know that it's a barrier to the PACE program if we're talking large scale of PACE programs, not not 10,000 here or there, but we're talking millions of dollars and, and it's, a, it's a big part of our energized Bridgewater work and one way to, for us to look at um, reducing energy consumption and, and having you know, overall uh, reducing the energy poverty piece, that's a huge component of it and it's a barrier right now. But, um, but staff would have concerns with going in to apply for a program if it can't be confirmed that the debt service ratio or operating debt ratio won't be impacted negatively to the point that it, it, could, it could prohibit us from doing some of the capital that we need to do. Or an alternative would be that if we can't get that finalized by July 14th, which I do have concerns with being able to change that, because when Municipal Affairs looks at this, they're going to look at it for more than just the town of Bridgewater. They're going to be looking at all the other municipalities, you know, that might have landfills and tip fees or, you know, other sources of revenue to offset debt. So it's not just a PACE bylaw issue. Um, and I, I do have concerns about having an answer by July 14th. So if there isn't an answer, at least having confirmed that there's an off-ramp in that application process so that we don't commit the town to to this five or six million dollars of borrowing and find out that um, we're going to be in a bad spot. Thank you, Tammy. Yeah, so it also means we have to continue doing some work with our uh, provincial colleagues. Um, I think I think the way you actually both explained it um, is is fantastic. So you've got a guaranteed source of revenue to offset the loan amount. So why is it being used 
as a negative against us in terms of our debt service ratio. Like it, it, for pace, it doesn't make any sense. So I know you need to kind of know by <laughs> July 14th, but I'm hoping that we can get an answer um, before that. It's just not logical to me. Questions from council? Councilor Thorburn. Yeah, my document shows that that could be anywhere from between five and six million over a four year time span. Is that correct, Tammy? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. 130 homes a year is a lot of homes, but that's a lot of people coming out of energy poverty, which is what is it, that's what we want, right? That's the goal. Councilor Graves. Surely the government would see that, right? Like it's it's just it's too good. 130 houses is a is a heck of a lot. You're right, and um, it would be a shame if that's held up. Um, it would just be a shame if it was held up. It doesn't. I agree. It doesn't make sense. And you said there's a meeting tomorrow uh, again with municipal affairs and and who mines and energy to. That's that's correct. Um, so it's director level staff at at municipal affairs as well as our um, our representative, and with director level staff at Department of Energy and Department of Energy. This is a priority for Department of Energy. So they've been telling us that you know they'll lobby hard to to kind of get the thumbs up for municipal affairs. But to Tammy's point, you know um, this is something that that we've been um, trying to to change for a number of years now. With with you know um, yeah. And, and just haven't been able to do it. So I, I think that, you know, in addition to the lien on the property, there's also this loan loss reserve fund. So I'm hoping that um, that further de-risks the investment and municipal affairs might have a, a different view on it with both the lien on the property and the loan loss reserve fund, um, you know, and because it's a, a, a provincial priority that may work to our advantage as well. Great. Any further questions? Not hearing any, so I'm prepared to make a motion, please. I guess I will, Your Worship. <laughs> Thank like you, it. Councilor Thurburn. <laughs> I would move that Town Council for the Town of Bridgewater direct staff to enter into a partnership with Clean Foundation to submit two separate applications to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, CFM, the Green Municipal Fund, Community Fishery Planning Program, and funding towards uh, recapitalization and de risking of the town's price program and improving its alignment with the energy poverty reduction program, conditional upon the satisfactory resolution of long-term and short-term borrowing implications. Thank you. Seconded by. I'll second that. Deputy Mayor Tanner, any further discussion? We've had a good one. Uh, you ready for the question? Question. question called Councilor McGinnis. Uh, let's try with the microphone unmuted, please. Sorry. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I cannot wait to meet in person. <laughs> Councilor Fragier. Yay. Thurburn. Yay. Councilor Donald. Yay. Councilor Graves. Yay. Deputy Mayor Tanner. Yay. In favor, thank you. Motion is carried. Please keep us posted, Greg, on how that meeting goes and what else we can do to support this going forward. Uh, our next item under business arising unfinished business is amendment to policy 60 appointment of deputy mayor. Um, so for the public wondering what this is, every year we uh, we vote on the deputy mayor and every year we ask the same question, which is, don't we do this every other year instead? And so <laughs> we're finally, uh, and I think that this goes back to certainly my first time on council. I think I remember asking this and Councilor McGinnis probably remembers asking this a couple of decades ago, don't we do this every other year? So now we're changing it to do it every other year. <laughs> um, I think it always takes the first year to understand what the role is. Um, so uh, are there any any questions before I ask for the motion? No, someone prepared to make a motion. I'll make a motion, Your Worship. Thank you, Councilor Brazier. Yes, the Town Council for the Town of Bridgewater approved the amended appointment of Deputy Mayor policy as presented in document 20-104 to change from an annual election to a biannual election as policy 60 for the town effective immediately. Thank you. Seconded by. Seconded. Seconded. Councilor McGinnis. 
Any further discussion? Question. Question being called. Councilor McGinnis? Yay. Councilor Frigier? Yay. Councilor Thorburn? Yay. Councilor McDonald? Yay. Councilor Graves? Yay. Mayor Tanner? Yay. I'm in favor. Motion is carried. Thank you. And our last item coming under new business is the Parkview uh, graduation recognition event, which um, is this Thursday, unless it's raining, then it's Friday. Um, and so a parent group put together a plan and a budget and have been working uh, really hard with um, Kent over at the LCLC to put this, uh, put this on. And uh, so this request for $1,500 is before us. Um, Councilor Frigier, I see you have your hand up. Um, yes, I'd like to declare conflict of interest as I have a uh, Park Pew grad this year. Okay. Um, you, you don't, you're not technically in conflict because you're not directly benefiting and your, your family's not directly benefiting from this. Um, right. So it's whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I feel comfortable with. Okay. No, that's, that's fine. Um, Are you so ready for a motion? I am ready for the motion, yes. <laughs> I move that town council for the town of Bridgewater award a grant in the amount of 1500 to the Parkview Education Center parent group as a town's contribution towards the community graduation celebration to be held June 25th, 2020. And that council provide its general support for the graduation celebration event as required by public health directives. Thank you. Second to buy. Second it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I think Councilor McGuinness <laughs> was first. Councilor Graves, you have your hand up. Uh, you're muted, Councilor Graves. <laughs> like the first group, was there money? Did this group raise money for graduation? Are there funds available for graduation? Um, so I can just speak as a as a parent that money was refunded by the school. A portion of the money that was collected for an end of year event was mailed from the school directly to. Um, to parents. So they less the yearbook money and I think the cap and gown money. So for example, I got a check for $30 back from the school. So unlike the, the French school where that money hasn't returned, um, this money was returned to the parents. So why aren't the parents paying for the graduation like they have done in the past? That's a good question. This uh, parent group took this on and Yep. Wanted to make sure something happened. Um, yeah, no request was made of parents, as far as I know. Just, just a quick comment on that. I, yep. I know they were str uh, struggling somewhat trying to get in touch because they're not allowed to access the the students' accounts directly. Well, not allowed to mass email through the school board and so on directly through the school directly. So, my guess is that they were struggling to get in touch with all of those parents and therefore perhaps collect a uh, you know, a donation or whatever the case may be to uh, to fund the event. That might have been their stumbling block with the short notice. I don't know. Just a guess. Yeah, I'm coming again here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would, uh, I would, uh, I would tend to support the motion. Uh, this has been a very difficult year, and, and uh, I'm not going to quibble over the amount of money. I, I agree with Mike. Maybe the parents should be contributing some, but at this point in time, I think we should uh, contribute that amount of money. Uh, Councilor McDonald. And just with a, a lot of parents out of work at the moment, struggling, um, they've probably put out money on prom dresses and taxes and, you know, all kinds of other expenses that they won't see back. Uh, I think it's really important for the town to get behind these grads and support them and make sure that they have something special where their parents may not be able to uh, provide that right now. Or if the funds weren't available, they wouldn't be able to pull it together fast enough, I think. These, uh, these grads have lost an awful lot of special memories. And if we can put a few dollars in the pot and make sure that they have something special to, to leave with, uh, I think that's really important for them. Thank you. And I wanna again thank, um, I think a lot of people in the public know that uh, Kent Walsh is the, is the, I'm gonna say the new manager of the LCLC, but he's been there. Oh, Deputy Mayor Tanner, refresh my memory when he started. Um, January, February? Uh, yeah, January, February. January. The time time has no meaning anymore. We're on week <laughs> 7,000 of COVID or whatever it is. Um, but uh, there's a couple of things happening for grads this week at the LCLC. 
And um, I just want to, I said it in my Facebook post today, I want to I want to applaud Kent. He just jumped in with both feet, whatever he could do, uh, logistics he's worked on, um, facility, uh, all the preparations. Um, so he's, he's really, uh, he's really stepped up for this. And so I, I don't want to, uh, we have to thank, of course, the parent volunteers for all the schools that are trying to across the province who are trying to put on an event for their for their community. But I also don't want to miss um, the LCLC staff and especially Kent, who's leading that. Further discussion? You want a motion? Yes, Your please. Worship? Yep. OK, I would move that town council of the town of Bridgewater grant award a grant in the amount of fifteen hundred dollars to the Parkview Educational Center parent group. It's a town's contribution towards a community graduation celebration to be held on June the 25th, 2020. And that council provide its general support for the graduation celebration event as required by the public health directives. Okay, seconded by. Excuse me, Mayor Mitchell. Mayor, Mayor Mitchell. Yep. This motion has already been brought forward. Oh. It was moved by Deputy Mayor Tanner and seconded by Councillor McGinnis. Oh, thank you. I, that's your thought. They had lost track of time. <laughs> that was an echo for a second. Uh, so, that's okay. a question. It does require a vote. Yes, okay, does it? thank you. Okay. Those are we'll do the vote now. <laughs> and I want to also thank the four other municipalities uh, for contributing to this event as well. Uh, Councilor McGinnis, yay or nay? Yay. Councilor Thorburn? Yay. Councilor McDonald? Yay. Councilor Graves? Yay. Deputy Mayor Tanner? Yay. I apparently read the motion. <laughs> and I myself, I'm in favor. <laughs> motion is carried. Thank you. Um, that was our last item. We have no in-camera items after this, so can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Uh, moved by Councillor Thorburn, seconded by? I'll second I'll that. Second the motion. Ten. Nobody else wants to leave, okay? <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you, folks. Thank Thanks. you. Bye -bye. Good night. Good night.